What's up guys, welcome back. Today's dish is traditionally made for celebratory events and today we're celebrating 100,000 subscribers. I'll be showing you my recipe for birria tacos. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit that bell and enable notifications as well. All right, meet me in the kitchen, let's make it happen. First things first, we're gonna need some of these dried chilies that you can find at most of your grocery stores. We're gonna use eight Arbol chilies and two ancho chilies. Again, these come dry packaged at most of your grocery stores. You can find them in the uh, Spanish section. If not, you can order them on Amazon as well. And these come dehydrated or dried. So what we're gonna do is remove the stems and the seeds. Get your mind out of the gutter. We're making birria tacos here, guys. Remove the stems and the seeds, and then we're gonna rehydrate these in some boiling water and make the most delicious sauce you've ever made in your life. Just be a little bit smarter about it than me. I shouldn't have got these seeds all over the place because the cleanup is not that fun, but uh, learn from my mistakes. Get you a nice sharp pair of scissors or your sharpest kitchen knife and just make a slice down the middle. Like you see here. And you'll be able to get rid of all of the uh, stems and the seeds that we're not gonna need. These chilies are packed with flavor. There is a little bit of spice involved here, so we're gonna offset that with a little bit of brown sugar, but if you're into spicy food, uh, no need to use the brown sugar. You can actually you know, double up on the chilies if you want to. The chilies going into the hot tub for about 10 to 15 minutes or until they're rehydrated like you see here. And then we're gonna use these as the foundation of flavor for our amazing sauce we're about to make. So go ahead and scoop those chilies out of that hot water and we'll put them into your mixing bowl or whatever you plan to blend this with. You can use a blender for this as well. There we go. Next, we're going in with one can of chipotle peppers and adobo sauce. Go ahead and dump that in. You're gonna make sure you get all of the good stuff out of that can, so we're gonna swish around a little bit of liquid just to make sure nothing gets left behind. There we go. Next, we're going in with some dry thyme. Some marjoram. Again, about a half teaspoon of that. Some chipotle chili powder. And some cumin. Of course, we're gonna add a nice pinch of salt. About two tablespoons of garlic paste or fresh garlic if you have it. And two tablespoons of brown sugar just to balance the flavor profile. As always guys, the specific measurements and ingredients can be found in the description box below. Going in with about a half cup of that liquid from the chilies and then breaking out the immersion blender. You can also put this in your regular blender if you want. Whatever it takes to make this amazing sauce that you see here. Take a look at that. I wish I could fill my bathtub with that. This stuff is packed with flavor, guys. All right, moving on to the meats. Traditionally for birria, they use goat meat, but you can also use beef. So you can use short ribs, you can use oxtail, or this beautiful chuck roast that we have here today. This is about two and a quarter pounds. We're gonna slice this up into more manageable size pieces. When you're shopping for a chuck roast, you wanna make sure they have nice marbling, which are these white lines of fat that you see. I'm gonna add tons of flavor to this meat. There we go. Not rocket science here, just make them all about the same size. That way they cook at the same rate. Then we're going down with a heavy coating of kosher salt. No other seasoning because we're gonna sear these at high heat and we don't want that seasoning to burn up at the bottom of the pan. So just salt these generously. On all sides, looking good. Man, this dish is packed with flavor. Let me know in the comments if you guys have ever had this dish before or if you plan to make it. Next, we're gonna dice up one white onion. You can use yellow onion, doesn't really matter. Red onion will work as well. I prefer white for this recipe. We're just gonna dice it up into bite-sized pieces. Any leftovers you can use to actually garnish your tacos with as well. There we go. Next, we're gonna heat our Dutch oven over high heat and go down with some avocado oil, which is a high smoke point cooking oil, which is perfect for searing meat right here. 
always press down for maximum surface area contact that's going to give you the best crust which also gives you the best flavor looking good and then we're going to sear these for a few minutes per side make sure you sear all sides until you get a crust like that oh man that is perfection Remember guys, that, that sear is very important. Adds tons of flavor. It's also gonna provide some fond at the bottom of the pan, which is also gonna flavor your dish. So far, so good. This is looking great. All right, once you have the crust that you're looking for, we're gonna remove the meat from the Dutch oven, leaving behind any fond and whatnot at the bottom of the pan. And then we're going in with that diced white onion. Just work that around with your wooden spatula. You want to turn the heat down here. It's about medium low. That way you don't burn your onions too much. Go on with a tablespoon or two of garlic paste and two tablespoons of tomato paste. Give that a nice mix and cook those onions until they become nice and tender. Once the onions get nice and tender, we're going to add in our beef stock to kind of deglaze the pan here. Give that a nice mix. Make sure that the garlic paste and tomato paste is well incorporated into our sauce. Once we got a nice simmer going, we're adding in our beef again. And we're just gonna braise this low and slow at about 325 degrees. Add a little onion powder and some garlic. And then of course that delicious sauce that we made earlier. Mix that around, make sure everything's well coated. Cover it with a lid and pop it in the oven and just let it braise until it becomes fork tender. Don't forget your cinnamon stick and a couple bay leaves if you have them. This is how we're looking after a couple hours. Oh man, the flavor is just so concentrated in there guys. This is called the fork test. You get in there with two forks and see if it shreds. If it does, that means it's done. So. The cooking time can vary a bit depending on how large your pieces of meat are, but you're looking at about a total cook time of, you know, three hours or so, I would say. Looking good. Add a little beef stock, mix that together to make your consomme. Of course, we need some cheese. For this recipe, I'm using some queso melt that we're going to shred up. That melts beautifully and it goes perfectly with these tacos. You can use whatever you like, though. Try to find a cheese that melts well. Here, my friends, is when the food porn begins. We're gonna shred this beef with two forks. It's so tender. You can just see the flavor screaming out of there. Oh man, that's gonna make some great tacos. I gotta give me a little taste right now. All right, break out your cast iron skillet or griddle, whatever you have. Here, I'm using my griddle that goes over my stove top. These things are pretty badass. If you can find one, I think they're on sale. Then you want to dunk your tortilla. I'm using corn tortillas here, white corn tortillas. Dunk that in the sauce and then throw that right on the hot flat top. You want to get some nice color on there for about 45 to 60 seconds and then flip it over. Like so. Next, we're gonna add some of that cheese. Of course, some of that beef. A little bit more cheese, because why the hell not? And then we're just gonna fold that over and press down to make sure we get some nice cheese melt action going. Oh man, brace yourself for some money shots and some food porn, guys, because it's on the way. Look at that. After about a minute or so, you want to flip it over. Just keep an eye on it. You don't, you don't want it to get too dark. Oh, man. And just repeat that process. Just dunk your tortilla. Get a nice coating of that sauce on there before you throw it on the hot flat top. Give it a minute or so per side. Just make sure you watch it. Don't want it to get too dark. Add your cheese. Add your beef. Add a little more cheese. Fold it over. Flip one time and you're good to go. That, my friends, is a trademark money shot.
I like to garnish this up with a little cilantro, a lime wedge doesn't hurt nobody, a good bowl of that consummated to dip your tacos in. Now you know I've got to try this. Here we go, moment of truth. Oh man, that's good. This should be illegal. These tacos are packed with flavor, so cheesy. Man, let me know what you think in the comments. Give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell to enable notifications. Again, guys, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for helping me get to 100,000 subscribers in less than a year. We're on to the next 100. Thank you so much. See you next week.